Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, the Spirit here. And so today, I decided to talk about something a little bit different here. I want to talk about a game that I personally recently finished, and I feel like that is just getting a lot of hate, just hate because it is currently popular to hate on it. And that game is Forspoken. Now, after playing the game, buying it, playing it, whatever, the game actually is pretty decent. I'm not saying it's like the gospel, but I think everything about this game is being literally overcharged by like m multiple people, especially like content creators. Because you know, it happens to every like every game that you play, you know. Now keep this in mind that I'm a person that enjoys games, even if they're like so what subpar, but I still have a fun enjoyment out of them, right? So give an example. Everyone hated on Mass Effect Andromeda. I actually quite enjoyed it. Was it like the best Mass Effect experience? No. But it was actually fun enough to play it and have a good time, you know, for the story and whatnot, correct? And so I feel like when it comes to modern gamers, modern gamers are so jaded when it comes to like their opinions. It's it feels like if it's not that 1010 God of War experience or whatever, you're it's it's a shitty game. It's terrible. You shouldn't play it. And I'm like, guys, y'all are making fun of Forspoken so much. Like, did I make fun of the dialogue? Yes, I did. I, I'll admit that I did. I made fun of the dialogue and everything I went off everybody else. But once you sit down and really play it though, it is honestly a pretty fun and decent game. Like literally, the combat is excellent. The gameplay is there. You know, the, the different spells that you can obtain is amazing. My only criticism with with the uh, game is the towards the pacing towards the end. And the story was it wasn't a banger. But it was decent enough to like be like, okay, it warrants a sequel. And what's crazy to me is like, if you want to talk about being get politically charged and stuff, it was a decent game to the point where they tried to make it out to say, well, thinking about this uh, phrase that she's black, you know, she's she needs more black struggle or something like that. I'm just like, what, really? A game that has that takes place in a different world, you have to put in black. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. But anywho, trust me, this is one of the few games that don't even try to like put in anything politically charged, like you know, a lot of modern games have started to do. But it's trying to tell at least a decent story, and that's why I give a props that. Now, when it comes to let's say when it comes to the gameplay, right? The gameplay is like I said, is amazing. You know, the combat is great. It has great flow, and the traversal of the world is amazing. Now, throughout the game, you do get you know an assortment of spells, which is pretty cool. You get between you know fire magic, water magic, earth magic, and jade magic. And the first magic that you pretty much start with is uh, earth magic, and so it's really cool to go out throughout the game world and you know throughout the open world at least. And you get to collect or find new and different spells to uh, upgrade for your character or whatnot, right? And so that's been, that was really cool, you know. And when you defeat major bosses, you get access to, you know, the fire magic or the jade magic and also the water magic. Uh, the boss fights were also pretty amazing, too. Like, those are probably the best boss fights I, I played in a game in a pretty long time. Like, you know, put it like this. Let's make an example here. I actually beaten for Spoken within 30 hours compared to me still playing through an Ubisoft open world game. Because an Ubisoft open world game is so much padded with a lot of shit. But, you know, that's just me. Because, you know, most of these open world games here, they just want to waste your time. And I, I can't, I don't, you know, as an adult, we don't have the time to, you know, sit down and really just play these games. But, you go. But to go back to my point, though, the gameplay is, is really great. Especially when it has, like, a grading system, too. Tell you how good you, you're doing within the um, combat or whatnot, too. And that's pretty cool, you know. And you have to find out each enemy's weaknesses and stuff. So, yeah. I feel like people have misjudged that so bad because, oh, let me talk about the dialogue. Yeah, whew, hold on, I'm about to say some words. Y'all play worse games, so quit the cap, y'all. Honestly, like literally quit the cap on that. Now, when it comes to the uh, open world, you now a lot of people make this crazy, open, say this open world is dead or whatnot, right? Okay, well, the game does give an explanation on why this open world is dead like or whatnot, correct? I tend to personally uh, connect this game to Eldering because you know Eldering is a game that's open world. You know it's pretty similar in my opinion, other than the combat is you know it's Dark Souls, of course, right? And so the open world when it comes to Eldering, it's pretty much, at least in my opinion, it's pretty lifeless as well. Other than like a couple of animals just sitting there not doing anything, you know. And the majority of creatures in the game are enemies. You know they come out there, they attack you, boom, right? Some are just passive enemies. It's the same thing in Forspoken. You know, you run around, you meet enemies, and some of them are passive, some of them will attack you straight up, and there you go, you know? So I see no difference in that, but, you know, Eldering doesn't get hate because it's Dark Souls. It's made by From Software. From Software is the godlike, you know, being that can never do bad, basically. It's what, to a lot of people, in, in a sense, you know, if they do bad, oh, they'll get a slap on the wrist and call it a day, but put it like that, you know? And keep this in mind. Did I enjoy Eldering? Oh yeah, I did. I beat it twice, mind you. And I did every boss for the majority of the part, you know. First playthrough was like, what, 
70 percent of bosses second playthrough was like 80 so it's like i did a lot i figured out a lot you know but it's it's just crazy to me how people make the whole open world comparison you know it's it, like I said, it's not bad it's just it could have been better yeah but at least it's not a ubisoft open world collect-a-thon where you got to collect every little thing for some pair of reasons because you have to level up because you're forced to level up because if you don't level up you're not going to be able to beat any bosses because you're gated you know that's the shit that i hate from ubisoft games okay so the story of Forspoken, right, was actually pretty decent. It wasn't like the best and it wasn't like the worst, but it was pretty decent. I actually enjoyed it, especially when there's a major twist in the game, which I caught me off guard. I was like, what? Wow, you know, that's insane. That's crazy. You know, people say that the character Frey doesn't have any character bro, which she does, honestly, because she within the game, she's selfish. She doesn't want to help anybody but herself. But then later she starts to realize that, you know, stuff changes and she, she has character growth, which is pretty cool, in my opinion. You know, she's growing as a character. You know, a lot of people say, well, d d d the character, she's like dumb, she was not dumb because dialogue. Okay, well, play the game. Enjoy it, you know. Have a good time. But anywho, my only real major complaint with the storyline is towards the end, because it kind of really felt like Kingdom Hearts 3, right? Because, you know, in Kingdom Hearts 3, everything was great until, like, the, the last, like, five hours into five to ten hours, actually, because everything just started crashing on three like this. It was like you go here to there, you there to there. And that's kind of like what Forspoken was, you know, because towards the end of the game, the last magic that you get, you know, you don't really have enough time to like actually sit down and enjoy it and have a good time with it because the story just moves on. And I feel like that they could have added maybe an extra hour or two to kind of spread out the dialogue a bit and uh, maybe added some things that, you know, you have to go, you have to go do or whatnot. You kind of get what I'm saying. But uh, other than that, you know, that's like, my major complaint you know the bosses were great i had a fun time you know being the bosses it made me want to know more about the, the game world and i wish that there was something that can expressively tell you like more about the game world or at least the world of afdia which the game takes place in i wish it could tell you like more um instead of just reading throughout you know it all right you, i guess you can call this like a little mini review right where let me tell y'all the game isn't the best game it's not the worst game i give this game between a 6.5 to a 7.5 it's a fun game to have a fun time with. You know, if you want to sit down and just play a game, play through a story, have a decent time, play Forspoken, y'all. Is that what's crazy to me is that a lot of people tend to forget that in the PS2 era, we had a lot of B, AA, B rated games or whatnot, right? That people would play and have fun because, you know, back then, you know, that was the game you got, that was the game you got, and you had to make the most of it, right? Nowadays, yes, you can easily return those games. You can, you know, say, you know, tell people that they suck online and shit like that. But it's like, you forget that a lot of franchises were spawned from these be ready games and so i feel like with you know the hate on for spoken is not really warranted i mean you can give out your opinion but then a lot of people's opinions are also shitty because you know modern gaming or whatnot now keep in mind a lot of the criticism that I also seems like oh well this game is subpar and it's uh 70 dollars okay well look, well look here in my personal opinion no modern game needs to be 70 dollars right now especially let me tell you why if your game is going to be come out as a buggy mess and have bad performance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then yes, that is just fine. Your game should probably be $50 to $60 if it's going to come out buggy. Because if we have to beta test your game for the next couple months to a year, then yes, your game should be $50 to $60 on release. Like these days, I have to sit down and really pick and choose on what games I want to pick and buy. It's like, okay, do I want to get this game that I want to get that game? Well, this game is performance bad, so I'm going to wait on it, so on and so forth, you know? And so that's the problem with like a lot of modern, but you know, let me go back to what I was talking about earlier though. Like the whole point about modern gamers, right? Is that if the game is like 10, 10 God of War experience, then it's not going to be the best game and people are going to hate on. They're going to pick and choose or nitpick on what to hate about it and they're gonna roll with it especially content creators you know content creators will choose any game especially if it comes out of bad performance they're gonna ride it until it dies because you know they're gonna try to nickel and nine people as much as possible um but you know again a lot of these games aren't that bad because i feel like at the end of the day for spoken is definitely going to be one of those games that people are going to say damn you know we honestly judge this game way too harshly you know especially because there's a there are worse games guys than for spoken Literally, there are worse games out there. And I've played some of those worst games. If I got a list of the worst games, I'll post them in the comment section and I'll let you guys know about these worst games. When it comes to Forspoken, I give this game a 6.5 to a 7.5. It's not the greatest games. It's not the best games. But it's at least decent enough to play and go through the story and have a good time. Now, once again, is it worth $70? Again, no, because I believe no game is worth $70 right now. But if you can pick it up for maybe $50 or $60, 
then there you go. That is a game that would be for you and have fun and enjoy it. Enjoy yourself while playing. Quit worrying about other people's modern day opinions. Like, you know, I, you just have to like do your own research and judge based upon your own facts. Now, I believe I said what all, all I have to say about this video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe. Also, make sure to hit the notification bell down below to be notified on more videos like this. Thank you guys for watching. Thank y'all for your support and all that you guys do. And we'll see y'all for the next video. Peace out. Much love, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also hit the bell notification down below. Thanks for watching.